know exactly what I'm talking about. In role-playing games, strategy games, or any other game that you play, it's effortless for you to do productive things. You don't just hold the controller and just space out and do nothing. You're actively engaged with what you're playing. You're solving puzzles, you're doing combat. You probably even spend time outside of the game studying up on it so you can do better within it. What starts off as just an hour of gaming becomes four or five until you realize that almost the whole day is gone and there's more important things that you wish you would have done. Sad thing about this is that looking for a solution, you open up YouTube to figure out how to be more productive and then you open up to your favorite YouTuber who tells you you've wasted your life on games. Games do nothing for you. These statements do have some truth to them. It's really important to understand the underlying reasons why you would do it in the first place. There is a much deeper reason than just time allocation as to why you're playing more games than playing the game of life itself. And I think you're here because you realize that. You realize that video games require intense focus, a lot of knowledge, and a lot of skill to be able to play. You give a video game to the average person who only watches movies or Netflix series and they've never touched a game, you give it to them and they're confused. They don't know how the attribute system works, they don't know that you're supposed to do quests in a certain way, they don't know how combat works, they don't know how you're supposed to react to certain different types of enemies with different strategies. All this stuff, non-gamers don't realize it, and that's why being a gamer in itself is literally your greatest advantage. And that is where you will end in your second pitfall with this journey. Traditional life gamification never took off and there's a simple reason why. It's just fucking cringe. So what I call traditional life gamification is taking the concept that, okay, if we're going to treat life like a game, that means we need to force game elements into life. We need to have gimmicky stupid things like, oh, I have this menu where I organize all the tasks in my day and I call them quests or steps and I have this like little pet thing and I get XP for doing certain things. Sure, these things you would think would be motivating to you, but it's all literally just clutter. And it's because of the underlying reason that these people who try to advocate life gamification have two main problems. They think that for life to be a game, you literally have to one-to-one -one take a game element and literally like force it into, the, into life. And the second problem is that they think that turning life into a game means trying to make everything fun. And the thing is, most of the things that you want to improve within your life are not fun. But that's a good thing because you realize that all the games you play, you're not just having fun all the time. You're probably grinding and doing boring things. You're like organizing your inventory. You're not sitting there smiling, laughing away while you organize your inventory. You're doing so many boring things on a consistent basis. And this is where we get our answer for how we should approach life gamification in the first place. The only reason that you do those things when in games without realizing you're doing boring things is the core principle of game design. If gamification is not about forcing your life to be a game, it's about understanding life as its own unique game and designing processes that help you do it better. This is what I now call life game design as opposed to what I call cringification, this traditional life gamification where everything is 8-bit and trying to be fun and not actually doing hard things because we know the hard things are what is essentially going to make us grow and going to force us to do things that will completely reinvent who we were before and literally level up. But you don't get a level up until you push past the adversity that is blocking you from doing more with your life. Before we get into the game design technique that's going to help you understand how to be more productive in your everyday life as much as you are in your games, is understanding that before we get into the design of the game, first we start with selection. Because I want you to think about literally the fact that you aren't productive in games that you don't enjoy. You probably don't even touch them. You go nowhere near them. If I gave you the game that you love currently at the moment and I asked you to spend five hours being quote unquote productive within that game, it wouldn't feel like anything to you, right? But if I got some random game out of the shelf that you never heard before that was a genre that you actually didn't like and I asked you to spend five hours being productive within that game, there is no doubt that it would feel like a chore to you. And that's the core principle issue that we face when trying to be more quote unquote productive. The thing is you're trying to be productive at things that aren't truly fulfilling to you. I don't want you to get misunderstood about the fact that fun and fulfillment are two completely different things. For fun, you're just going to want to do fun stuff for the sake of it being fun. And for fulfillment, you are going to do both fun and hard things for the sake of being fulfilled. Fulfillment is essentially the peace of mind that you get during or after 
whatever thing that you do. So for me, in terms of gaming, developing characters in Skyrim was a fulfilling process. And then getting to play those characters once their builds were all optimized and everything like that is also fulfilling. But it also takes a lot of work to build a character to plan out all the perks you're going to give them, how many stats you need to increase, the process of grinding for those stats and all that kind of stuff. That is a fulfilling cycle, but it's not just purely fun. And that's the kind of mentality that we have to strip away from how we approach life gamification. Again, that is what I call cringification. We're talking about life game design. What is the number one goal of a game designer? Think about it. The goal of the game designer is to have the player engaged at all times but that doesn't mean they're doing the fun thing all the time because they have seen from their testing and it's evident in the game design that we see i want you to think about a game like skyrim a role-playing game a lot of combat to it a lot of lore a lot of different complex systems like the stats the attributes if the game designer wants the player to be as engaged as possible they won't just put them into combat 24 7 because combat is quite an engaging part of games right when you're fighting enemies and stuff like that you're very focused but the thing is if they let you if you were the game designer and you chose to let yourself do combat all the time because you just want to grind and grind and grind on your one-handed or two-handed weapons or something like that you would eventually burn out from doing all of that grinding because the game designer knows this they've actually built a framework for figuring out how to keep players engaged while also them giving a rest so the way they do this is by using the framework of the gameplay loop which is combat resource gathering and then exploration so we all know what combat is and in real life it's about doing the thing that you know that you need to get done it doesn't require any research it just requires your focus and attention with all the skills and knowledge that you currently have and this is where your knowledge as a gamer who has experienced good game design becomes your greatest advantage because if you understand the underlying principles behind good game design you can take that and apply it into your own life and just literally get ahead of everyone else who doesn't understand this. Even productivity gurus and even authors of productivity books don't understand this as deeply as game designers do. I want you to think about this. Gaming as an industry does more revenue than both Hollywood movies and music combined. Think about all the psychological knowledge that you would need to manipulate out of people to drive more revenue from mediums like movies and music. And think about how much better game designers have to do this in order to drive that much more revenue out of their customers. It's because they know so much more because games are an engaging medium in the first place. So this is where the second stage of the gameplay loop becomes really important because the second stage is resource gathering. Basically, after you've done your combat, you know that you need to collect materials for you to help you with the next instance of combat. And remember, this is working like a loop. First, after you've done your combat, after you've done your focus session, you want to take a break and then recollect yourself. And the way that people in the productivity space have understood this is that they use a technique called Pomodoro. Basically, you do 25 minutes of focused work and then you do five minutes of taking a break. But there's this element that they actually forgot to put in because they don't understand game design. And this is where our advantage comes in. Think about the fact that whenever you have combat in Skyrim and you lose your health and you use up all of your health potions, you realize that you actually probably need to stock up more on health potions for the next time that you get your combat done. And think about if you're working on a big project and you don't have the resources that you're going to need for that project. Let's say I'm doing this YouTube video and and I'm trying to edit the video without downloading all of the resources that I'm going to need before I get into my editing stage. That means I'm going to switch back and forth between combat and resource gathering. And imagine if I were to be in combat and then go running for a health potion in the middle of it and then go back and forth between those two things. It doesn't make any sense. But as gamers, we know that we have to stock up on these things before we get into that stage. And then once you've got those resources, it goes into the last stage of this, which is exploration. And exploration serves as the best way for you to quote unquote actively rest. This is a stage that the Pomodoro Technique gurus will tell you that you're supposed to go straight into and skip resource gathering. But we know as gamers that the resource gathering itself is really important because it helps us prepare for the next cycle of combat. Because if you just go straight into combat, into exploration, 
you're missing the fact that you're preparing for the next quote-unquote battle. But I need to tell you the importance of exploration and what we're trying to achieve here. Basically, like we established before, we need to have micro breaks because we can't just be so focused and engaged in combat all the time because it will drain us so much. So we kind of need to replenish that energy and that's what rest is about and it's something that needs to be designed into your life. In the exploration phase within games, Usually they use this period to help you find ways to tackle combat differently. So for example in like Horizon Zero Dawn, when you're doing combat and then you break into an exploration phase, by doing exploration you find resources, but more importantly you start finding new weapons that help you tackle combat for specific enemies very differently and more efficiently. And think about it as a gamer, if you were to play Horizon Zero Dawn by only doing the quote unquote combat, you didn't do resource management and you didn't do exploration, you only used your starting weapon, the amount of ammo you had, the amount of resources that you had in terms of health, you would be so far behind people that did resource management, that did exploration, because within exploration, they find things that increase their capacity for resources. They find things that help them tackle different enemies in different ways. And that's what exploration is. And in terms of an actual practical productivity sense, it means exploring different ways that you could tackle the task at hand. If you are hitting a brick wall in terms of combat, you're having a real load of difficulty when you feel like it shouldn't be that difficult, that's when you need to use exploration to figure out new ideas of how to tackle the situation. So for me, when I'm trying to be more productive within my video editing, it would look like I'm spending way too much time doing a certain edit, but I had no idea that there was a different way that I could approach it. And if I didn't consider this important part of exploration, I wouldn't look at videos of other editors and see how they do their process to see if there's something that I could implement from there into my next cycle of quote-unquote combat. That is one reason out of thousands of why you have effortless productivity in games, but not in real life. And I'd love to tell you more, but you probably won't see any more of this if you don't subscribe. So hit that button and I'd love to share more game design principles that will help you in your real life, because you know that gaming is your greatest advantage. If you want to learn more about the concept of life game design, click this video here.